Gumshoe, what are you going to tell us this time? The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. I don't know why that's what my brain that, did. <laughs> <laughs> at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. What? Ooh. Yeah, they had to or give Maggie us the shot, had, huh? <laughs> uh-huh. Or Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. Ooh. Oh, I love this picture of Dad Glad. <laughs> they yeah, gave us this, so, this sexy so shot. So unfortunate too. for him. Something about just like the you know, just like the I don't know, the shade and if not in color, or just <laughs> the look on it. Right, it's it's such like anguish. Mm -hmm. The scattered lottery tickets. That's just my art. The victim didn't have any identification on him, sir. But we figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Alright, well, there's a point to object, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Hmm. You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, trike. Goodell, I beat you last time. Like, fuck off. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one. So, let the fun begin. Like, every prosecutor treats Phoenix Wright if he is, like, like at the same time, a very bad lawyer, and they recognize that he's undefeated. And it is very frustrating. It is very funny. <laughs> It's like, dog, we were literally just doing this, and I kicked your ass. Mm -hmm. Twice, technically. Uh, I mean, that's right. He's actually 0-2. Because that last case, yeah, well, there was I beat him in two different trials. Yeah. Sit down, you coffee nerd. Uh, well, Wes basically <clears throat> pointed out to us the, uh, if it wasn't obvious, the missing... There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. I mean, the sports paper was literally stuck behind the thing, and nobody presented this. So I imagine that's got to be it, right? I'm not sure. I need another chance for thing, but yeah, sure. Objection. Oh, motherfucker! Oh. That wasn't it. Okay. Was it left by the defendant or by the? Yeah, victim? but it wasn't. It wasn't missing from. The, it was still in the restaurant. Uh, you're right, but all right, let me press this. So, the half a million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were unaccounted for. Accounted yeah. for. Interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for, but wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh, yeah. The one that the restaurant owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. What a lucky guy, huh? And they're just going to let him get away with it? <laughs> it was just one dollar, detective. I guess no one cares when it's that little, unless it's gumshoe. Okay, that is kind of funny. Or the IRS. <laughs> ah, fucking got him. If I don't find a hole in this testimony, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. Bitch is going to get a letter in the mail from the IRS saying, fuck you. Also, you're getting audited. <laughs> also, we watch save data. <laughs> Thank you, the I IRS. Thank, Thank you. you so much. IRS, I know you're watching this. Go fuck yourselves, but thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Gumshoe isn't, come she isn't giving us anything to work with. We can't find any contradictions if he doesn't give us something. Yeah, that's true. But Maggie and Gumshoe are like dumb and dumber. <laughs> <laughs> Our only hope <laughs> is that they were so dumb they missed something obvious. Come on, Gumshoe, be the dumbest you ever been. <laughs> That was really good. It's incredible. Um. Okay. Well, shit. I feel like we kind of gotta uh, press some stuff. Yeah, just keep pressing. Press it. Press it good. Scary old man, Detective Gumshoe. There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Ah, oh, we're obviously talking about the same old man. Officers were dispatched right after the report came in. 
But the old guy still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled abuse at him. And seeds. Hmm. Victor Kudo seeds. said, A cab. <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing. I caught each of I caught each one with my teeth. Sorry, what? What? Also, was the prosecutor called at the same time the cops were? I guess not even the mighty yeah, Godot sure. can be avo avoid being attacked by that guy. Like what? Godot, you weren't even well, on the first, the original case of this. I caught them Winston all in Payne. my teeth, and they were on the ground because <laughs> I am also a pigeon. <laughs> No wonder I don't like you. I shit on El Tigre's motorbike seat. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> the old man was the only other customer on that place in the place at the time. He took his time finding a payphone, apparently, so he was late reporting the crime. Uh, I feel like we can skip this one, right? Like, surely. I mean, it is a great. It, it is really funny to think that someone murdered someone and passed then out passed afterwards. Out, yeah. How long was the defendant Good. unconscious for? The officers got to the crime scene at around two forty. Excuse me, two four zero. Aggie was still out cold in the kitchen at that time. It took another ten minutes or so before she came to. I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. What? I bet you would have liked to have carried out the search. I bet you would have liked to carry out the search, too. Dumb shoe. What a horny jail. I would have loved to see Maggie asleep like what? the head all pretty and peaceful. Gumshoe. Little, cre little creepy. You're a professional detective, Gumshoe, not a professional bird watcher. Okay, that's also uh, a good joke. Uh, that's, that's good. Save the romantics for your own time, detective. Because the guy who's oh, constantly know. making love to that coffee cup. <laughs> like, hey. in a fucking room. <laughs> we do every night. Oh, no. All we need to know about is the investigation. Oops. I guess I'm pretty red right now, aren't I? <laughs> uh, <what's this? clears throat> I guess it's going to be like, how did you find out who he was? He didn't have any identification? Are you saying that it was stolen then? No, I don't think so. The victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card on him, pal. All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. 58 cents? Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less in their wallet than me, pal. <laughs> oh my god. The victim sounds like he was a thoroughly miserable oh my young god. man. god. Or some kind of outlaw. Why not give him a bit of an edge? I think I'm onto something here. Are you? Hey, I think that's the least. In that's the least information we've gotten so far. Yeah, what? That he was poor when he died? Like, <laughs> hey, how'd you figure out then? Wait a sec. Huh? Did I say something dumb again? Undoubtedly. Let me paraphrase. We. Paraphrase, but you just testified to this court. The victim, paraphrase. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Uh, basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Okay, okay. Uh, we just thought he kind of looked like a Glenn, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then we couldn't we were trying what to think his last we name might be. <laughs> And they were like, yeah, let's just make it a palindrome. So, Glenn yeah. Elg. And then we identified yeah. him as that. His first, he just figured his first name was Glenn, and then somebody took a bite of the food there, and they went, ugh. <laughs> and so, uh... <laughs> we, so we uh, just named up... Glenn Elg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh? Oh. At. He's so let down, he's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eyes thing going. It was a prescription bag on the victim's table along with the lottery it's ticket. his prescription for potassium cyanide. <laughs> his doctor <laughs> prescribed him poison. <laughs> it seems Mr. Glenn Elg visited his doctor before he went to trip. So this is 
This is it's actually okay. amazing how much they freaking ripped off this case yeah. in Great Ace Attorney One. Unintentionally, but yeah. How un uh, Why is it unintentionally? Well, that's true. But Could maybe be. they just straight up ripped it off. <laughs> just, just wait till we get a, a a lady wearing like a goose on her head, and we're like, okay. Okay. <laughs> the, head, the head trauma lady we saw last week comes in with a goose on her yeah, head. Yeah, she comes back and she's got a swan. We got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Hmm, that's a reliable enough source for the court. <laughs> sure, whatever. I don't really care. What should I do? Should I leave this alone or ask to <laughs> hear more? Give that health insurance. Okay, I do. do I do. It, do it, we gotta. Do we gotta ask about that. I'm sorry. Listen, what, it's what kind of plan does he have? Does health insurance cover potassium cyanide poisonings? <laughs> What's his copay? <laughs> so is the, the reason they only have 58 cents because the exorbitant costs of health care can we talk about the american <laughs> medical medical system your honor they also get vision is that why he had a scouter can does you it, buy scouters does it include that too should be on that too's on trial today here your honor the american the japan california health care system i'd like to call to the stands <laughs> the statler family who are the lead cause of the opioid e epidemic <laughs> There we go. That's, that's topical, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was good. So the victim had no form of identification on him, correct? Yeah. And yet, before arriving at the restaurant, he went to see a doctor. Which means he must have had his medical insurance card with him. Okay, I mean, that... Yeah. That's something. I mean, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Oh, that is very true. I mean, they can look up your medical. It sucks, they can look it up. They can look it up. The fact that it hasn't been found, the fact that it hasn't been oh, found, God. points to only one obvious conclusion: the victim's medical card was stolen. That's that's very <laughs> loose, irrelevant. Mm -hmm. True. The victim didn't have a medical insurance card because he didn't have insurance. That's why he only had 58 he cents. Because <laughs> they robbed him blind. The real thief <laughs> is the Japanifornia healthcare system. <laughs> but why? Because Mr. Glenn Elk didn't have medical insurance to begin with. Also, Chart Buddies I mean, does yeah. point out that was the right answer, actually. <laughs> we, yep. we picked it for a joke, but that was the right answer. <laughs> Huh? Hmm. As I thought, a thoroughly miserable young man. Also, we literally joked about him not actually having insurance, but that was the answer. Uh-huh. Yep. Or some kind of outlaw. A bit of an edge never hurt anyone. Like, Godot's don't, like, if you don't have don't, insurance, you should be arrested. Fuck you. <laughs> no, hey, that, 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 uh, a bit of edge never hurt anyone. If there's any writers out there, don't take that advice. <laughs> Making your characters too edgy will will hurt everyone. As somebody who's rewatching Naruto right now, I can confirm. I was gonna say, just look what they did to Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, or Shadow the Hedgehog, yeah. Sasuke Sasuke single handedly made me stop liking edgy characters <laughs> when I was younger. Yeah, Sasuke. No lie. I hate no top. lie. I hated Sasuke so much like wow. Edgy characters are really, really lame. <laughs> I'm an Avenger, Sakura. Yeah. There's yeah. one thing I know about myself. I'm an Avenger. Looks like we're off course again, Nick. Yeah, because we're talking about Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> just, just Finish, like please stop talking about Naruto and continue with your testimony. <laughs> uh, believe you it. Better belie you better believe it, pal. <laughs> uh, shit. Dr. Bayo, pal. <laughs> that was good. Explain for the court the events following the, the attack on the Hidden Leaf Village. I <laughs> following mean, the, the tuning preliminary... exams. Yeah. <laughs> hey, folks, be excited um, for our, our, our uh, Naruto discussion show, Save Data Bio. Uh, oh, uh, that was a good one. Well, I can't. I mean, I made that great. earlier this week. We, we now we now actually have a Naruto discussion channel in our Discord, which is called Save Data Bio. So. <laughs> um, but can we press that again and ask about what was in the prescription yeah. bag? Yeah, yeah. Well, 
I'm not. Oh, you don't even need to load it. Just go back and ask all again. Right, all right. Was not, this, it was the last statement, was the though. One before, okay, well, we'll read this one. But the defendant had been passed out for a while, correct? In that case, isn't it possible someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket? Hey, yeah, you've nailed it, pal. Hmm. It happens to me all the time. What? Evidence gets planted in your... We had a department party the other day, and when I got home, I was wearing the boss's shoes. What? That's not similar to have someone planting evidence in your pocket. Oh, shit. Keep up this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat. Sorry. So, trite. Someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket. I was kind of hoping Gumshoe would be like, Oh, we do that on the police department all the time, pal. <laughs> Why do you think they call me Gumshoe? Because I chew on shoes all the time, pal. <laughs> it's a pretty bold statement. Gotta back it up with some evidence? Uh, well, I'd love to if I had any. It appears you have no evidence to support your theory, Mr. Wright. Continue with your testimony, witness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go back to... Figured... Yeah, figure out who he was, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, let's get all this. How'd you figure out who the victim was? Prescription bag. Prescription bag. Ha, funny joke about the healthcare Ask system. Ask about the bag. What's in the bag? So, what's in the bag? What sort of medicine was in the bag? Well, actually, the bag we found was empty. Huh? Yeah, that's uh pretty important, actually. Yeah, completely empty. It was completely empty. Okay, but the bag would say what the prescription was for, though. That is oh, correct. And now we and now we can object to something being missing from the crime scene. There you go. That's stupid. But yes, okay. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence? Desperate, are you trite? <sighs> now, what happened with the investigation after that, detective? I don't know why I drink a bottle of poison. Nothing else is missing. Okay. There you go. Objection! Hey. Adam. <clears throat> Detective Gumshoe, I should I think I should point something out to you. There is just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, finally! I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, will you? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Did the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? Uh, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trebien. Where then did the medicine disappear to? You are too cool, pal! <laughs> Indeed. Due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. It is, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? I, uh, I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? No. The victim was killed by poison, and the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. Well, again, no, because it's, it's potassium cyanide. That's not anything that's used in a prescription. <laughs> uh, yeah. Order, order. Well, Mr. Godot, what do you have to say to that? <laughs> that's all. <laughs> what? Read for the court the name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. I swear to God, if it's fucking hottie clinic, it, I'm it, gonna it, lose You my know mind. it's gonna be. You know it is, Zach. Come on. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New Ear. Oh, no, it's not. You're kidding me? Otolaryngological clinic? Uh, otolaryngological? 
Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Godot? He had Hardly an STD. Illness, Your Honor. <laughs> 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 because he fucks. <laughs> Hardly an illness, Your Honor. Or like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? From the sex war. <laughs> the sex wars. He of got 82. a purple heart. What the fuck? He got, he, got, he got a blue he got a blue ball for that. <laughs> you know, Genital herpes the funny... claimed another life, Your Honor. <laughs> the day before the incident, Mr. Elg found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. That's pretty serious. Ow. He Owie. ruptured his eardrum? And what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream. <laughs> that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal. Not to be ingested. What? That's gross. It's mentioned in the autopsy report, if you read the fine print. It found traces of the... It found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Just a real, I mean, just just for shits and giggles. Yeah, no, we don't we don't get to read that part. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, no. Because <laughs> it's in the fine print, Zach. Yes, yeah, here it is. In very, very fine print. Are you putting fine print? Which on page is it on, Your Honor? See. <clears throat> Sorry about that. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trey BN. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he would have eaten his medication. Uh, seems that this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. No. Nick, if you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. She's right. But I can't get away with any weak objection. What should I do? I mean, I feel like we gotta push the medication issue. Yeah, because we yeah. don't have anything. Only moments ago, Mr. Goodell made the following statement. It seems Mr. Eld correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trebian. If that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? Uh? But the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. Objection. I lie all the time. <laughs> du duty. <laughs> <laughs> you, know as, you know as well as I do that that medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems likely that a prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems yeah, likely. Yeah, but we that don't the, know that. It hardly seems likely that the coffee waitress served served. Uh, it hardly seems likely that the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. Uh, that's enough, Mr. Godot. Is the detective the only witness the prosecution witness wishes to call? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Godot? Uh, <laughs> um, I, uh, I've got my own witness I'd like to call, sir. What? It's the old man who was there in the restaurant on the day of the murder. That's not your job, Gumshoe. Victor yeah, if Kudo. I've learned anything, it's that... Witnesses can't call other witnesses to the stand. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. They cannot. Victor Kudo? <laughs> the pigeon hater? Oh, shit, am I Victor <laughs> Kudo? <laughs> Very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems little more than trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial. And that is something that bothers me. Wait, he wasn't? Jake! Good job, Nick! 
Seems like a huge oversight. The court will adjourn for a ten-minute recess, after which we will hear the prosecution's next witness. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Wait, have you already drank eleven? That's really un that's really unhealthy, man. That's so fast. <laughs> court is adjourned for recess. Whew! That was close. Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. Did you? That's my line, sir! No, it's my line! I'm I Spartacus. I, really I think I really did die a little bit. I'm just channeling myself right now. <laughs> Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe! How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me. But he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's gotta do his job, right? We got a little pouty, Maggie. That's mm, a nice sprite. It's okay. I know, I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. But it really hurt this time. It felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy! I don't ever want to see him again! Oh, no! Uh, Baka. Poor Gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. Uh, I don't like the phrase projectile <laughs> seeds. Victor Kudo used bullet seed. It's super effective. Uh. <clears throat> I bet he's going to be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me, even those never-ending bird seeds. Unlimited bird seed works. Unlimited bird seed! Art will now reconvene... <laughs> <laughs> the, the court's back in session and the judge has like a whole new outfit on and he has like <laughs> just a ton of bling a brand new, yeah yeah he's brand got new a new car that he's, he's got a into king the ice house. uh shadow necklace on uh, yeah he's got a big a big necklace necklace with a j on it <laughs> hell yeah he's got he's got he's got an entourage now <laughs> yeah he's like what's up bitches <laughs> Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Godot, your next witness, please. Prosecution calls the lucky old timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. That's a really yeah, what? weird way to put will it. The uh -huh. Will the witness will the witness please take the stand? <laughs> Name and occupation. If you don't mind. Name is Victor Kudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty are what make me. Mind you, I can be quite emotional at times, too. We don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell the court your occupation. Professional pervert. <laughs> <laughs> My occupation? Here, listen, youngin. How much call? What? Oh. How much call do you think there is for kimono embroidery here? Well, it's called Japanifornia. I imagine there's some. Kimono embroidery? That's what I do. Or did back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were embroidered, embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. Wow, a real craftsman. They're a dying breed. Not soon enough. <laughs> Hey, maybe he could embroider my costume sometime. Anyway, your costume? Like I, said, <laughs> I thought that was just your clothes. That's what you wear every day. I feel like calling it a costume is. Anyways, guys, also... do you guys like my do you guys like my costume that I'm wearing right now? <laughs> your bridge costume, so yeah, it's my bridge costume. 
<laughs> I see Wes, you're rocking your Wes costume. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Zach, yeah, here's Zach nah. costume. Could use a little bit of work though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I gotta, yeah, I gotta I go really to get Zach. I gotta go to Spirit of Halloween and buy my, uh, buy the Zach costume. <laughs> anyway, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. Just to confirm, somebody in chat, let me know. In the Japanese version. He he does that, right? Like it's not like, oh, we don't do that here. Oh no. yeah, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> so I had to take a job working the cash register at a burger joint. Pretended a smile. To be fair, I mean, embroidery's still a thing in America, right? Yes. Like yes. I feel yeah. like he still has I feel like he still has some transferable transferables. Transferable <laughs> skills. Yes. Transferable. I don't know why I couldn't say that. Transferable burger. Yeah, transferable burger. <laughs> I worked at transferable burger. <laughs> that burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. What? They didn't uh, have to speak with customers. I guess. Yeah. Also, Maya's just losing her mind right now. <laughs> now then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh, yes. I was eating some seeds over a cup of Javachino. Seeds? What do you think these are, hmm? Wait, was that the first time we've seen him, like, throw the seeds up at his own face? Yes. Yeah, That's he was funny. eating them that time. I see. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps. Did I? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I did. I saw it all. And please tell the court for all ears. Sure, sure. I'll tell you. I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. The young man was reading the sports paper. The serving girl brought him a Javachino, but she put something in it. The man took one sip of it, looked like he was in terrible pain, and then collapsed. That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. Mr. Kudo, she is not a serving girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. Wow, okay. I mean, <laughs> progressive judge, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thank you a little bit there, judge. You're as bad as the rest of them. All these new fangled words. What's wrong with old-fashioned ones, huh? People asking for pronouns. I don't have any pronouns. <laughs> Fuck people with that. New mindset. fangled? All this talk of radios <clears throat> and glasses and zoons. Thank you. Wireless and spectacles, I tell you. I excuse me? Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip away. Ah, oh, fuck you, Boomer. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Fuck this guy. Well, um, <clears throat> I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, the young man was reading a sports paper. Serving girl brought him his Jabuchino, but she put something in it. I feel like we gotta press him on this at least. Yeah, we. I mean, we gotta press that. Mr. Kudo, that is a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Victor Kudo never makes mistakes. I got every T and cr I dot every T and cross every I. That's good. That's, That's good. good. I see. My eyesight's fine. The doctor said I only need spectacles for reading and driving. I bet his eyes are only really fine when he's scoping out a waitress. Yeah. I saw what the serving girl put into the Javachino as well. Oh? I bet I know what's coming up, and something tells me I'm not going to like it. I mean, we're still going to press it. Yeah, I mean, we're going to know anyway. Your Honor. We need more clarification on what was put into the victim's <clears throat> coffee. I'd like to ask the witness, uh, I'd like to ask the witness add what he knows about this to his testimony. Hmm. Nope, we don't need to know that. 
I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Sure, sure. There's no question about it. She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Oh, cocaine. Oh, dude, she was trying to give him some good times. She's a waitress. Of course she had cocaine on her. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, I feel like we can press yeah, that, too. <laughs> D did she really put that into the coffee? You doubt me, boy? She took some out of a small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Couldn't she have been adding sugar? Sugar? And a small brown bottle like that? Like that? Witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? <laughs> bottle like this, perhaps? Oh, there it is! That's the one! That's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume. So, what did the accused put into the coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Uh, hmm. I kind of don't like that Godot showed him the bottle, and then he could be like, oh yeah, that was it. But, I mean, obviously that doesn't matter for what the game's trying to get us to do. The fact that they added this statement, though, is what makes me... It might be a thing where we, we have to, like, press another press statement. Press more, yeah. Press another statement. Yeah, that's fine. He took just one sip. You youngins. You waste everything. Those Javachinos cost eight dollars. In the good old days, we would have drank every last drop, eaten the cup, and then died. <laughs> <laughs> we would have finished the coffee before we died. Wow, that's that's Con good. Congratulations. Damn, all people could resist poison long enough to drink more coffee. <laughs> you have earned the title of baddiest man to grace a courtroom. Just wow. wait. Just just wait till you have to defend Batman. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. So it was an immediate death. Well, with potassium cyanide, I suppose that is possible. Oh yes, he slumped over without so much as a twitch. I felt the Javachino I just drank turn sour in my stomach. Oh yes, I know that feeling. And the waitress, I presume, she is, uh... Hmm. Yeah, I might as well press this one, too. <clears throat> you said, I remember her well, in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you can identify her by? Now, no. interestingly enough, if we remember when we talked to him yesterday, he didn't actually know who Maggie Bird was. It's true. Because right, he, he was only staring uniform. at her ass, mm -hmm. or boobs, or whatever. Or, you know, whatever girls have. Whatever. <laughs> whatever body part in particular uh -huh. <laughs> uh, most appeals to this old pervert. <laughs> particular features? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry? You can see all the way up to her... Her... You know... He's practically naked in that uniform. So the particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit. No, Phoenix, did you listen to what he said? But anyone could wear. But anyone could wear just such a uniform. Even anyone me. Anyone could. Anyone could wear the Steel Samurai outfit. God, I'm having deja vu. Even us. Uh -huh. It snap cut to us and made uniforms. Uh, be good. Mr. Wright, please spare the court of any further mental anguish from that image. Hey. Don't get all excited, Nick. You gotta keep yourself together. Uh, I guess I got a bit carried away. <laughs> there are other things I recognize about her, too. He seems pretty sure of himself. What should I do? I mean, we're gonna press That's further. He literally admitted yesterday he doesn't recognize shit. <laughs> sure, you saw the waitress take the coffee over to the victim. But what matters is whether or not that waitress was Maggie Bird. Quite right. Mr. Kudo, there are these other features that you recognize about the defendant. I would ask that you add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. This is so awkward of like, and what part of her body were you staring at, you old man? 
There was a ribbon in her hair, and her apron straps were loose. You do seem to remember several details about her appearance. But what about the most... But what about the most crucial detail of all? Her face. Her what? <laughs> As if I wouldn't remember that. What's a face? <laughs> I'm, turns out I'm actually, actually ace paper. from Zero Escape. I have prosopagnosia. Spoiler <laughs> alert for 999. Witness noticed the straps on the accused apron. The accused's apron. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right. I could even tell you the color of the ribbon in her hair. It was red. So you see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. There's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Uh, and this uh, is the part which I have been instructed to ask about the straps. Because it's apparently very funny. Uh, Chad, if I don't laugh, you all are going to regular jail. <laughs> Mr. Kudo. You're going to West Jail. Mr. Kudo, you seem especially interested in straps. Why is that? Because I'm strapped. <laughs> 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 what? The ribbons in her hair, the straps in her apron. What's the fascination? F fascination? People have all kinds of fetishes, Trite. What? You don't need to embarrass the witness. What I want to know. No kick shame. What I want to know, Victor Kuda, was was her straps on or not? You want to know about her strap? <laughs> That's what I was going for. Listen, you yeah, young yeah, and yeah, upstarts. Yeah. I haven't got some sick strap fetish. Okay, they're kind of actually doing that. I mean, look, Udo mm. just said we don't kink shame here. The first respectable thing he's ever said. Is there any relevant... <laughs> Excuse me. Is there any relevance to the witness's unusual love of straps, Mr. Wright? I was just curious as to why he was so fixated on the waitress's straps. I said I hadn't got a strap fetish. How many times do I have to repeat myself? Very well. Continue with your testimony, <laughs> Mr. Kudo, and make it strapless. <laughs> like strapless panties. God damn it. Uh, I think right. CD really saw Maggie do it. I'm going to load back to that spot. All right. Ask about her back. The identifying features you describe from all these things, you, the identifying features yeah, you described are all these all these things you would see from the back. Yeah, hey, that's actually not. I sure that's actually one hundred percent not Maggie. Uh huh. So what? Yeah, the person in the picture. Yeah, is I don't it, think I paid attention. I don't think I was paying attention to it the first time. Is it possible that? You never saw the waitress from the front at all? Huh. He's got you there, Gramps. Why did you object? Okay. People That's not objecting. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> you don't need to object to agree with me. <laughs> People normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe someone. But this witness's testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. This is harassment. I tell you, I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons. I'm just telling you what I saw. Mr. Kudo, the court requests that you add details about any identifying features features you observed from the front, that is, to your testimony. Sure, sure. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. If I can't find a hole in it soon, It'll get even longer, I bet. Wow. Uh, there wasn't anything that caught my interest about there her. There wasn't anything that caught uh, my interest about her when I saw her from the front. I mean, I feel like there's I mean, an the objection apron. on that one. Yeah, I feel like the, the apron was pretty fucking noticeable. Yeah. Come on. Adam. Mr. Kudo, I would like you to please take a look at this. 
That filthy thing would suit filth like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what my grandson looks like just after he's done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. You think I'd forget something as dirty as that, huh? Well, you half-witted clot. Uh. 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 <laughs> that was good. Uh. Uh. <laughs> what? What is it? Ever since I said you half-witted clot, there's been an eerie silence in here. Mr. Kudo, this apron is the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. Uh. And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means, if you had really seen this apron before... Uh. Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Witness! I can't just say oop. You can't just oops your way out of this. <laughs> well, well. Oops all oops. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Listen, trite. Here are the facts. The day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. That being the defendant, Miss Maggie Bird? Exactly. And when that one waitress put the poison into the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. Hmm. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. Fate of the defendant may rest on what you say and remember seeing. What you say you remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect working order. Yeah, this is kind of like, again, this character is like the fucking sergeant in the other one. Yeah, actually. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. He's even got like kind of like a... a and and I feel like he talked about his grandson. Yeah, there you go. I can't remember a single occasion when I forgot what what burger a customer wanted. He can't remember? Probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. <laughs> That's this, guy works at a burger, this guy works at a burger place. I'm surprised Matt doesn't already know him. Yeah. That's a good thing. Hey, Vicky Coods. What's up, man? <laughs> Give me the special. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just take my regular. <laughs> Very well. Let's test just how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. Now, I feel like this is maybe a good cutoff point. Because yeah, we've got we've got this, another one, and then one other one. So we got three more testimonies. Yeah, to I feel like that's that's a decent trial. and this is like a decent stopping point of like. We'll come back and he'll tell us what he remembers about Maggie Bird on that day. Yeah. We're gonna have enough for two episodes. Well, I think then we'll 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 get one episode out of the cross examination and then we'll get another episode of starting the investigation. That's what I hope. That's gonna be it for this week's Ace Attorney with an actual lawyer. Again, if you enjoyed, uh, let us know in the comments down below. If you wanna watch us live, head over to twitch.tv slash save data team. Uh, where you can watch this every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, as well as many other shows several nights throughout the week. Uh, and if you want to support us on Patreon.com slash SaveDataTeam, we'd really appreciate that. Uh, folks, we're barely $50 away from having to reenact an entire Shakespeare play on stream, uh, as well as doing a, uh, a playthrough of Deltarune, which we did hit. Uh, so look forward to that in the coming weeks. Uh, be Wes's first time playing it, so very excited. Uh, but until next time, court is adjourned. Bunny Susan. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if there was a name I missed out. Whoa! Chrono Wizard? Hello? Chrono Wizard! Oh!
just Chrono dropped Wizard, thank you so $500. Well, but thank dude. you, Chrono Wizard. Been a, a dude. Bit, been a bit stressful donating, uploading art tonight, but at least this, at least, I hope this at least makes you guys feel better. It's also goal hype. Chrono Wizard, are you kidding me? Oh, That's dude. incredible. Dude. Also, we have to play Al, Weird Al the Somnium Files. Weird Al the Somnium <laughs> Files. Holy shit. Wow, thank you, Chrono. Chrono Wizard, are you dude. kidding me? Dog? I was going to say, Chrono Wizard, you're, you're coming for the... <laughs> You're coming for Makumichi's yeah. <laughs> pool, pool stream crown. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Chrono Wizard, Chrono thank Wizard. you. Yo, Chrono Wizard, thank you so much, man. Oh my gosh. Like, thank you so much. You give you... us too much already with your amazing art. So thank I you know. for the. Seriously. Incredibly. I know. <laughs> Would you like yeah, to cheese it as a thank you? <laughs> except, Open wide. The bridge, ah. the bridge cheese it. The prees it. <laughs> the uh, uh, <laughs> so no, Chrono, so Chrono, Chrono Wizard's been Chrono Wizard's been around. You've been around for a long time, haven't yeah. you, Chrono Wizard? Chrono Wizard like, got mentioned in the very first uh, Ace Attorney highlight video. So, fuck yeah, Chrono the, Wizard, the Dono Wizard. So <laughs> we're gonna call you now. Hey, <laughs> thanks, thanks for sticking with us for so long. For man. real, for real, really I really very much appreciate, appreciate it. it. Oh my god, five hundred dollars. Thank you so much. Holy crap. Love you, man. Six, thank you for putting this together. This is actually really good. Uh, this is Whoa. everybody's uh, magical girl transformation. Magical girl. Let me get the solid yeah. zoom. Uh, we got Gnomes, Dia, Biggie, Recky, Albi, Jack, Koala, Lemon, Off the Grounder, Helium, Plum, Data Shrub, Blast, Blue, Red, Society, Giant Penguin, Rose, Six, Levi, Tori, Honret, Charlian, Val, Happy, Soapy, James, Taputis, Man, Mocha, and Spider. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Uh, Again, I, I still think my favorite is Giant Penguin. That it's just <laughs> just a being a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. It's just the soulless eyes of a penguin <laughs> in a maid outfit. Like a doll's eyes. Uh, like a <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, thank you Rain so much. The, for... the rainbow effect is phenomenal. Uh huh. This this is uh, again shout outs to everybody in the community who, who designed their own selves as magical girls and thank you six for putting this together. This was a huge amount of effort and is very noticed and appreciated. So yeah, you. that's awesome. I love this Furio Tigre. It's fucking rad as shit. <laughs> uh, Furio Tigre as Phoenix. In, in court, which very is nice. very good. Soapy, the phony Jin Yop looked just like you, although he was slightly taller. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Also, Soapy, your version of the tiger eating the dragon or snake or whatever it is on uh, L2 Gray's jacket is so good. Immaculate. 10 out of 10. No notes. So oh, good. That's fantastic. Beb wasn't sure which version was funnier, so here's both. <laughs> Maggie. Oh, I like that. I like that uh, social media handle for her though. At Birdbrain. Bird Birdbrain. Ah, that's good. Be good. God damn it. Just the the look at my lawyer dog. I'm going to jail. It's, will never not be funny to me. <laughs> King Curon finally finished on working on this Phoenix as a Transformers character concept all the way back from July 2021. The idea that he's a colony bot, not a Cybertronian. Uh, I based his design off Transformers Animated and IDW1's version of Blur, as well as some aesthetic bells and whistles from Transformers Cyberverse. Well, hey, guess what? I fucking dig the shit out of this Phoenix Wright. Yeah, uh, his, his Transformer is looking pretty dope. What kind of car does he turn into is my question. To say, it's that's like a the race next car? question. Yeah, what, what, what is the car, though? Oh, King slash Karen. motorcycle slash truck. Oh, King Karen says the basic principle is your job is what you're born into. That's it. Okay, well, shit. That is, that's pretty messed up. It's like Ants, the movie. Uh, this kicks ass, King Kieran. Hey, have you ever watched Transformers? It's just like Ants. <laughs> uh, Dawn Sun with Prigiot. Hell yeah. It's so good. Much. Yeah, this is so metal, and the fucking uh, the hoodie and the the badge on it, like ten out of ten. 
Uh, Damon, one of the first ideas I had for this project, <laughs> Wario as Furio Tigre. Wario Tigre. <laughs> 10 out of 10. And yeah, he's literally <laughs> the opposite version of Mario, which is Phoenix. Incredible. Also, look at his, he's, yes. look at the, the shirt. The shirt is Bowser biting, uh, Oh, it's Meow, sorry, Meowser and the dragon from Mario Galaxy 2. 10 Hell out of 10, yeah. incredible. Crush this. That's so good. Damon, that's insane. That's so yeah. good. Wario, Wario Tigre is so clever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Emerald Scholar, bringing back an old fan favorite. I mean, there were two options. The bitch or sh this bitch or shirtless Larry because I'm not, I can't be a normal person. No, I love this one, Karma. I was going to say. The eyes made, like and the brows. Kiss. Fucking. Oh, yeah. He gets his brows done. For real. He gets his brows threaded. Absolutely. Absolutely. And colored in. Wow. Incredible. Uh, Rose with my beloveds of a uh, uh, merwoman, merfolk, a uh, lot of heart. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> Pig. Pig Maximilian Galactica. <laughs> That's really adorable. So adorable. 10 out of 10. Uh, croissant with now a Maya. Hell yeah. Again, I love these little little like textured doodles. Uh, Anatomy of Maya, times arrested three. More to come. Hands to make shitty boxes with. Someone tell me. Oh, tell me how the balls stay there. Uh, bun, not the not the burger kind though. Sad face. No <laughs> thoughts, only burger and crime. Magatama, <laughs> that isn't the important one that susses people out. Short skirt, but just long enough so Mia doesn't moon the gallery. <laughs> Sandals, the most practical <laughs> footwear for investigation and court. Aesthetic, but impractically large ribbon. <laughs> uh, her legs are uneven, for real. This totally isn't a mistake in the inking, the, in inking the sketch. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Very cute. Yeah. And again, I love this. I love this pattern style. Mm -hmm. that you and then, is this like young Victor Kudo? Oh, it's me no, as Victor you. Kudo. That's you. <laughs> Goddamn pigeons! Also, yes, uh, Magnus just does chase birds and squirrels, so that is very fitting. <laughs> uh, Kale the Conqueror with a big brain moment. <laughs> so I bent down, and just as I was picking it, yeah, it's wild that he did that. Uh, this uh -huh. is really good, though. <laughs> Hell yeah, thank you, Kale. Oh my, oh god. my god! This is so good. Oh my god! Yo, Jason oh. is gonna flip when he sees this. I love how Vic that... Vandal's in the back seat. Yeah, Vic Vandal's yeah, in, the, in the back seat. Uh, <laughs> fucking dual barrel roll. It's just an NPC. Stop me! <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, if you haven't seen the uh, our Star Fox uh, 64 Let's Play we put up this weekend, uh, the first minute is like a, a jump cut of all the times jason yelled at slippy in just one mission of the game uh it's very funny it's over a minute so like slippy was getting lots of shit that mission very deservedly i should add but because yeah, slippy's the fucking worst yeah <laughs> credit was this fucking rules thank you <laughs> I'm so